It was Cracking Advice to play upon the host of Motion Country Cousin Sir Winnie. I appreciate you all for being up in here right now. You could have been anywhere in the world besides to rock out with the podcast. And on this uh, second episode, we have the uh, illustrious uh, Adi Yodin, and we are going to bring her in uh, now. How are you feeling, Adi? I'm good. How are you? Thank I'm you doing. for having me. I appreciate you for being here, taking the time out of your day. Uh, I know a lot of this is a, a, a really big time for you. you you've uh, just moved up from the city we used to share together to, to go right. out and and uh and accomplish the world and and uh with your first would you say this is your first official head coach or assistant coaching position or would you classify what you did last year as your first no this is definitely definitely my first coaching position okay and you parlayed that from an uh, interim director of basketball what uh, so oh, what was first, yeah, so when I first got came back to Oregon, it was interim director of creativity slash student support. Okay. And what was yeah. that? Like, so like, were you just like, pretty much just making sure that you, you kept the culture going for, for the new girls that were coming in? Yeah. So yeah, that on top of just kind of making sure that the girls are being seen in the community, kind of making sure that they're like doing some some we call it SAC at Oregon so it's like student athlete advisory committee so okay. there's about five different uh sectors on that I was a part of one which was the diversity and inclusion the B Oregon group okay. so just kind of making sure that they're um helping out with that or attending events with that um as well as making sure they're doing well in school so it's oh, my job and that was, that was hey, and I think I initially met some of the girls that you brought in, like um, Pow Pow. Like, if, if you're an Oregon Ducks fan, you 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 obviously know the great scorer that she is, and that was like a great transition from Sabrina to her as like a really good scorer and like leader of a team. Mm -hmm. What would you say the? Okay, so let's let's back up a little bit. Let me back up a little bit. 2019, you graduate and you get the position, or you continue your basketball career overseas, uh, Quinta Lombos, right? Yep. Uh, you have a great season over there. Everything's going great. And then 2020 happens. Yeah. Kind of walk me through that like emotional, like roller coaster, like preparing for it and then just having it like snatched away from you. How, like, what was that like? Yeah, so it, it was crazy. So 2019, we, we were obviously coming off of the final four year I'm enjoying spring, graduating, da, da 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 and I get the opportunity to go and play in Portugal for Quinta dos, Quinta dos Lombos. So um, I get there, and it, it's fun. I'm having a good time. We're winning. Uh, we So the way the league is set up, you play your regular season and also kind of intertwine towards the end. You're playing in a tournament style for the national championship. Okay, okay so uh, we make it to the national championship. We win it. I get MVP. We go. This is in. That's crazy. Yeah. You just said is, that like nonchalant as hell. That's why it's crazy. It's like <laughs> we win it. I get MVP. Like you're talking shit. All right. <laughs> uh, that's in like what COVID happened in March. So that's like February. That's like yeah. I'd say it's like late February. This happens. Wow. Yeah. And so we get back. We're celebrating and. We like we we're like hearing rumors like this COVID things happening and we're just like whatever like Portugal's pretty safe da 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 and then yeah. we hear teams are kind of like canceling practice or uh, they're just scared and so our coach is like we're still gonna have practice da 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 and then all of a sudden two days later he's like all right like I have to send you guys home so me and the other American are like what. <laughs> Dang. like it happened it was like boom 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 and so it was crazy <laughs> dude that's like super insane to think about it was like it because it, that's it was nothing like that here in the states like here in the states it was like 
oh like in january it's like we might have this 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 new flu coming out called covid and then march hit and they shut down sports i, I think it was like right after kobe died they like just shut down all of sports and mm -hmm. it was like what like in the what? middle of a basketball game it's like why did we stop the mavericks from playing ball and it's like oh okay this flu is more than what we thought it's like actually taking yeah. people out <laughs> so mm -hmm. so that's, yeah. that's like that's tough man it, it was definitely tough especially because like we we had just got done winning we probably had two more games to play a regular season and we we're going to go into tournament play at that time we were sitting second in the league Mm -hmm. So it was like us and this team called Sportiva kind of going back and forth between first and second, first and second. That's and so terrible, bro. Yeah, I know. We're just like, dang, okay. But anyway, so he around that time when our coach was like, like, we got to send y'all home. That was when Trump was thinking about not letting anybody back in. Mm -hmm. So he, so he, his main goal was just to try to get us home as quick as we could. And so we like packed up our apartment and basically like peaced out out of there. Damn, that's like a thief in the night. Like, hey, bro, I'm sorry. Like, your presence of some weird, sh you know what I'm saying? We got to get y'all out of here before we can't get, like, <laughs> we can't hold you, so we got to take you back. Like, we got to send you back. Exactly. So, like, you, like, that happens, and that's, like, February, March. Mm -hmm. Right around that time, like, you still have connections with the U of O. Um, right around that time here, we're, we as fans, my wife and I, we're like mm -hmm. very excited because this is the the year for for us as Oregon fans, like Oregon Duck fans, like this is the year. Our team was stacked. Mm -hmm. We were blowing people out. Like, and I think we had beat Louisville in the regular season. And that was like the hump that uh that we had to get over when you were there. Like I think you guys might have lost to Louisville. Lost um, Louisville. Yeah. So it was like I was I was prepared. We were like super ready. And then yeah. they they stopped everything. So like, did you have like with you having connections still like we saw what they said, like they said that they were like hurt, like, but what was yeah. like really that like, that moment when like you got back here and you started to like connect with the girls again, like how, how like, how heavy was, how heavy was, how important was that season and how heavy was it when it got stripped away from them? Um, well, so they were chasing that national championship and I don't care what South Carolina say, Oregon was winning the national championship that year. Like without a doubt, that year they beat Team USA at home they beat yep. UConn on the road. UConn hasn't lost at home in Lord knows how long. And so they was, they was ready to, to chase the national championship and they definitely would have won it. Um, so that, that's just, that just sucks for them. But also that team hasn't gotten back together since. So after the Pac-12 tournament, because they won the Pac-12 tournament yep. in Vegas, and that's basically when COVID blew up. And so our coaches just sent them home because from they had Vegas. This, from Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. From Vegas. And a lot of them was already graduated and, or they couldn't come back to graduate and walk because of COVID. Yeah. And so no, like they haven't gotten back together in Eugene since that the whole squad together. That is heartbreaking to think about dude. Cause like, yes, I'm gonna talk to you guys. I'm gonna talk to the camera now, like to the people listening, like I, this team means a lot to me that like that 2016 to 2019 20 university of oregon women's basketball team was a lot like i rubbed elbows with them i got to like play like you know like not play basketball watch them like dominate on the basketball court and like transfer from like oh this is just something special to like dude like this is something special <laughs> and we all knew it like and for me, like they walked around as sisters everywhere. Like if you saw Sab somewhere, you saw Adi, you saw uh, 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 what's that other talk chicken? Niara. Niara. Yeah, Niara. Sorry, all those girls. Like you saw Taylor. Like all of them. They're all together. So it was like you knew that that was going to be something special. So to even like know that they they've not had that moment of being sisters all over again at once. And like, I, I know Morgan, like Morgan had to go back to, you know, Australia after that. So it was like, I know mm -hmm. it's tough for her. Um, a lot of, a lot of goals that were, I guess, like not fully accomplished or like fully reached, but it wasn't their fault. So yeah. I don't know, that was just tough to like sit here and like, as a, as a fan and as a friend, it was tough to like sit and like swallow. So H had to put that out there for like the people listening and like, yeah, yeah. South Carolina, y'all, y'all would've got their work. Got that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now 2020, you mm -hmm. guys are um, 
pretty much more than an athlete it up and Sedona is leading the charge. I'm at the bowling alley with my wife, just, you know, hanging out on date night and that pops up on the screen. It's like our leader here at the University of Oregon is speaking up about how the women are honestly being treated like second class citizens as athletes. Mm -hmm. um, she rang some bells. Would you like she to did. talk about that? Like, cause you were a part of that squad. You were part of that yeah. team at that moment. Like, yeah. was that calculated or did she just like do that on her own? Or did she like talk to people? Like, how did that come about? No, so we were in Tennessee for the first round of the tournament. Actually the whole, the whole NCAA tournament that year, that 2020 year was in Tennessee. It was kind of yeah. like bubble, bubble basketball basically. All right. um, and so, yeah, we, this is probably about the third day we're there. So we've gone through meals, we've gone through practice, we went to the weight room, da, 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 stuff like that. And you see ours, and then you go to social media and you see what the men got. The men yeah. have steak, set of the yard, hotel, set of the yard, the weight room, and we're left with basically a, a rack of balls or Dude, yeah, 30 it, pound weights, basically. It looked like you guys were at a hotel. Yeah, like. Basically, it, that's what it was. It was a hotel connected to the convention center. Basically, mm -hmm. is what it was. Um, anyway, so, so that, around that time, Sedona was getting popular, getting famous on TikTok, but it wasn't to the extreme that it was now. Okay. She had a listen to her. That's where she was at that moment. So uh, her, it was actually her, Niara, and I want to say Taylor Chavez. I'm not 100% sure on Taylor Chavez, but they convinced her to like post it. Because at first she was like, no, I'm like, I'm not going to post it, da, da, da. And they're like, just do it, like, whatever, it doesn't matter. So she posted it, and it just catches fire. Wildfire. Yeah. Wildfire, to the point where, like, now, like, the federal government has looked at the women's national soccer team and was like, you guys actually <laughs> deserve way more than what you're getting, but we can hit you with the equal. And that's yeah. great now. Like, that's a, that's a conversation that I'm glad happened um you guys like you guys know like I have a little girl myself so as a as a father to a daughter like I want my daughter to have a world where like she is able to play basketball and have the same exact luxuries offered and afforded to her as the mm -hmm. men has that always been a thing though that's what I wanted to know like when you played in the NCAA tournament like you were getting swag bags and going to the Bahamas was it the same as it was when like Sedona posted that picture and nobody knew about it or like uh, like how would how would you like gauge that describe it a little bit yeah so it was a, it's a little bit different because that was during COVID and ours my years wasn't during COVID so we were able to go out and get our own food so it, it wasn't provided by the hotel or by the NCA but okay. one thing I want to point out is that uh before Sedona's post everything on the women's basketball side of the NCA tournament was all labeled women's basketball whereas the men was rated uh, was named March Madness, NCA March Madness. So like, it was like, we were just the little sister of March Madness. Like, yes, we were a part of March Madness. Why do you have to say women's basketball? Obviously people know that we're women. You don't have to trademark women's basketball NCA. Like we're in the yeah. March Madness too. We're competing for the same championship. We have the same amount of teams. We have the same goals. We want to be March Madness too. For sure. And so, uh, so this past year, everything was March Madness and not women's basketball which is super cool yeah and that's it's again it's very difficult to think about that it's you guys are asking for the bare minimum and people are in like Sabrina dropped 16 assists in a game the fourth player to do that ever and the Bleach Report comments are quite frankly just like make a sandwich make a sandwich get in the kitchen it's like yeah. bro it's like I've seen this shit firsthand if she was to put you on an island one-on-one -on, -one on that wing you're cooked <laughs> that you're is her cooked. kitchen <laughs> that right? is her kitchen <laughs> boy like what are you talking about so um, you got, you part, like, us, like we talked about earlier, you parlayed the intern position that you got just by being the culture center and the GOAT that you are the, to the University of Oregon because you were the highest rated player to be recruited to the University of Oregon before mm -hmm. like Sabrina, right? Uh, so I was Kelly's and Oregon's uh, highest ranked player that year. So Kelly got to Oregon 2014 and I was his I was his first recruiting his first class. class okay yeah so I was the highest ranked player in that first class before Sab and everyone came yes 
So she started again, you started the the culture that Kelly wanted. So it was like, again, like in the in the in the articles that I read once you got the position last year, you were like, it fell into my lap. Do you think that like so for me, I don't think it fell into your lap. I think you worked your ass off for it. And mm-hmm. he saw it and he respected it and he gave it to you. Mm-hmm. So do you think like now you would go back and kind of change that phrase, A? Eh? And do like what would be something that you you gain from that time that you are going to like continue to move forward with as a coach. And mm-hmm. this is the three parts. All right. And the third question is, where do you see your coaching career finishing? Okay. Yeah. So uh, first off, yes, I would change the phrase. Um, yes and no, for the most part. Um, I say it fell into my lap because I was literally just back out in Eugene because my girlfriend at the time was living out here. So we, so uh, she stayed with us during the whole month of the March. And then we finally came back at her in April, April. Okay. And it just so happened that the, the girl who was in my position at the time was leaving to go get a coaching job. Okay. And so Kelly, Kelly called me. Yes. He, yes, I am who I am. So <laughs> there we go. Like, That's what I've been wanting this whole damn time. <laughs> finally. <laughs> he calls me. He's like, Hey, like it's not set in stone yet, but we, this position might be opening and I talked to some people and you were the first person to come to mind. So boom, yes. Of course, Kelly, I'm taking that job. I'm coming back home. Of course. Yes. Let's thank go. You. go Ducks, always. Um, but no, yeah. So I would I definitely would change it, but also wouldn't change it because I wasn't looking. My goal my whole life was to play as long as I possibly could. Yeah. And COVID just put a wrench in that. And so now I just had to switch switch uh, my career path but in my opinion I think everything happens for a reason and and the advice that I would give to people is always walk through that open door you see open door walk through it because you you never know what's on the other side and you only can know if you walk through it so I think that's the biggest advice that I would give people um and then secondly or thirdly where do I think my career is going to go from here I think it's only up from here um this is my first coaching position I was nervous I'm still them nervous um, but I've been here for about a week now and I've kind of got to hang out with the girls and uh, hang out with the coaching staff and kind of know the, the role for a little bit. Um, we start practicing. We've had camp for the first, our, we had our first week of camp last week and we have another week starting on Monday. Okay. And then we have 10 practices before we get to go to Greece on our foreign tour. So those practices will kind of help me kind of learn the ropes a little bit more and kind of learn our skill level. I'm really excited about that. I know a lot about basketball and I'm excited to kind of give a piece of me to our student athletes here at Seattle U. That is amazing, bro. So again, shout out to Seattle U, um, Red Hawks, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, Seattle Red Hawks. Uh, I think that for me, um, what you just said is, 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 is amazing because like you do have a, a, a great amount of knowledge when it comes to the game of basketball <clears throat> and being able to impart that into the youth or student athletes or or however it may go is just going to be great so like the i think the ability for you to actually be able to coach at a national level uh and get people to have their eyes on you again you you girl you you, walking through open doors you never know Mm -hmm. which one can open up never know so it's it's dope and i'm i'm proud of you as a friend i'm proud of you as as somebody just like looking as a basketball fan to see where you've come super proud Mm -hmm. of you so um, just yeah, and that's and that's what this this interview and this podcast is about. It's like you know, so I just want to talk to my friends and give them the flowers while while they're still here, while we're still here, and while we can like celebrate those moments, um, but not like rest in the middle. You know what I'm saying? We rest yeah. at the end. Right now is yeah. like shout out to Kobe. No resting in the middle. We just like take a little moment to you know put the glass in the air and say congratulations. Mm-hmm. Now this is the part that I that uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about. I've talked to. Uh, ex U of O softball coaches about this Chelsea and uh, Kelsey and they were like um, very open about their what they thought could change or help viewership when it comes to women's basketball what do you think besides uh besides the obvious because I I know that the money's there like that's been my goal like my dream was to be a general manager so I know that the money's there money's yeah. going to be there where do you think where do you think the future of the WNBA is going to go? And how do you think we can gain more eyes on it to where we can stop having ignorant men in the comment section saying stupid stuff like make a sandwich? Because that's literally low hanging fruit. Yeah. Um, sorry if I went out, my mom was trying to call me. Um, shout out to mom. I'll call you later. 
Um, <laughs> Love you, mama. Right. Uh, for me, I think our biggest audio audience for women's basketball right now is the youth and the older generation. So if we can kind of, I don't, and in my honest opinion, I don't know how we gauge that middle ground because there, there's some tweak uh, sprinkled here and there, but it, a lot of it is still focused on men's basketball. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely do see the growth and it's definitely gotten a lot better. Um, but I think it just continues to start with the youth, uh, especially the little boys and the little girls, because little boys love it. My little brother, he's seven. He, when I was playing, he didn't miss a game. He was either yes. there or he was watching it on TV. I do remember this. <laughs> like, I remember seeing Instagram posts of him and his little Sabrina joke, like, what's up? Let's go. Yeah. Let's so go. like, yeah, like, and I think that's it too. Is I ha- Again, I have a daughter and I want my daughter to be able to like watch basketball and be like, Oh, that's accomplishable. I can do that easily. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say it's the excitement factor of like, oh, well, bring, I mean, they can't dunk the ball. Who cares? Like, Steph Curry can't dunk the ball. Motherfucker is the most viewed basketball player in NBA history at this point in time. He's not known as a dunker. Yeah. The San Francisco, or San, I said San Francisco, the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> the Golden State Warriors <laughs> play a very, open style of basketball where it's get yeah. the ball to the open man get the ball to the better shot so that's what people call boring the boring style of women's basketball that's what they do is just dick swinging so i think yeah. that you know if we it, it's definitely you're right if we have more eyes on it from the youth and um shout out to a lot of us girl dad being out there bro because we all love kobe and we all want to keep that legacy of like of what kobe started because i mean if it wasn't for him and his relationship with Gigi, like and I've seen him come to Oregon. I've seen him go to UConn. Mm-hmm. Like that right there was like, oh, okay. Like, let me just, cause I've always, I have always been a UConn fan because I, yeah. I loved Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird growing up. Yeah. I, my sister was 6'6 and she played basketball growing up. She never wanted to, but like I forced her to try and go to Tennessee cause I wanted to like date Candace Parker. Yeah. <laughs> Candace, I'm a married man, but like, and I know that you don't even swing my way, but if you ever want to, we'll talk about that later, Candace. Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, those are things like, I, so I've always had an eye on, um, the WNBA and women's basketball. And I've always loved it from afar. I just never had that full push. And then dancing in a college bar one day and I bumped elbows with somebody. I was like, Oh, you seem to be dancing pretty cool. I like the way you dance. <laughs> Ended up being some, some basketball player at the university of Oregon. I seriously did not know that she hooped. No, no BS. I didn't know that you were an athlete until like later on. And they were like, yeah. oh, oh, you know, Adi. I was like, how do you know? Cause it was like, oh, she plays basketball here. I was like, the motherfucker that be dancing in here? <laughs> Her? All right, cool. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, she just, I like the way she danced, cause she definitely can get down. We, we, we just shut that place down plenty of times. Yeah. All right, so rapid fire now. Go for it. I think another way is to the platforms. So a lot of women's okay. basketball is being streamed on Facebook Live or Twitter Live or just like random things. If we can get more viewings on like ESPNs or the CBS Sports of the world, yeah. I think that helps a lot too. Just having eyes on it in a different aspect of just being in the arena yeah, is for great sure. for women's basketball. And I think that's a big thing too. You were talking about platforming, like uh, just like the notar- like the notice noticeability. I don't think that that's a word. I just made that up. Uh, notoriety. The, the notoriety of it. I think that might be it. This college educated yeah, from the uh, hood. We'll Google so, it later. Like, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think that I think having like eyeballs on it from the and like cash on it from the standpoint of we can have more women playing on these teams if USA Network buys the rights to the WNBA. What does the USA Network right now show besides absolutely nothing? So we would have 24 hour access. You can have people learn more about the athletes by having like day in the lives or uh, ball is life versions of like YouTube videos specifically for them where mm-hmm. they don't have to do it themselves and try and push it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just as, as the men, it's on us to push eyeballs for our sisters. Cause you know what I'm saying? Like our sisters are always there for us. At every men's basketball game, every you know football game, the women's basketball team is there in, in solidarity and in support. So we got to do the same thing, guys. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a couple of like just spitfire questions first. That are it's like either or or first, and it comes to your mind. Okay. Um, so 
this is this is and this is the only reason I say this is because I know that you have a little connection with one and I, I don't know where your love of basketball started. If you had to pick one team, the Sue Bird, Adina, Tarasi, Yukon Huskies, or the or your U of O Ducks, who do you think wins? And I'm not saying like in a final four format, who wins in a five game series? 2019 Oregon or 2020 Oregon? 2019 Oregon, because that's when you were there, right? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, tw- 2019 Oregon. We got in a the- five game series? Yeah, we got to get 32 coming off the bench, bro. We got to. I think five game series. Oof. Okay, I think it goes two and two, and UConn wins. Two and two. Is, is that because of coaching or like, and that's not a knock to, to Kelly, but yeah, we just no. know how great Gino is. Like, do you think that that's yeah. what it comes down to? I think it comes down to competitiveness. Like, Sav's not gonna, Sav's not gonna let that happen. And once, and like, the way Sav operated was, once we saw in her eyes that game was over, we all locked in around her and we made sure we supported her and she supported us the same way. Um, and I'm not saying that they win by 20. I'm saying they win by less than 10. Like a hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I would say. I would say would see me personally, because I think the style of basketball you guys played with Sab dropping triple doubles, like it was five points off the bench <laughs> is they played a slower style. And that's why I picked that team. Cause I think that team was like in the two thousands, they played a mm-hmm. slower style of ball. So how you guys operated the, the ball movement, the speed, the being able to like, you know that that's your corner. Don't move from that corner. I'm gonna get her to come this way. I'm gonna get your guy to bite and then right over the top. So I think that that's why I, I agree with you. It's a five game series, but I see you guys winning by seven. That's just me, but it's okay. not my rapid fire. This is yours. Um, okay. Wings or flats? Flats. Flats. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> See, I just, I'll, I'll be uh, switching up. My wife, I ordered all, all drums yesterday. She was like, drums? Right. You <laughs> yeah. uh, so do you like um, summertime or do you like the winter? Or what's your favorite season? Excuse me. We'll say that. What's your favorite season? I'm a, I'm a winter baby. I was born on Christmas. I like winter just because I when I when the way I dress I like to layer a little bit more oh yeah and then in the summertime I feel like it's basic shorts and a tee for the most part unless okay. you live in, in a different place where you can kind of wear linen and flannels and whatever but I like to kind of layer and, and see how different things work together so I would say winter for sure um look me in my eyes because I do have a little one here top or bottom Oof. switch <laughs> oh you know what I'm saying? Like here or you know, where we at with it? Which one you ooh, want? Which ooh. one you going for? Uh bottom. There we go. I knew my sister. I knew her. <laughs> if there would be, if there's all right, we got it. if there's one thing that you could tell your younger self, what would that be? Continue to be you. Don't don't let nobody try to switch switch up and try to make you however they want you to be. Like be you. And I've always, that's always been me. So I just continue to tell her that. All right. What I'm going to do right now is stop my camera. I'm going to give you the camera for a little bit. I want you to tell some people um, what, whatever your, whatever your rainbow is, whatever your slogan would be, whatever you want somebody to, if they're watching this for the first time to, to know about Adi, that, that kind of encapsulates you. So I'm going to give you the floor. Cool. So um, me, I come from a big family. I have 10 siblings. I had a brother who passed away. He was a stillborn. He would have been my only full brother. I have a tattoo of his birthday on my right side of my body. And that's the only side of my body that's not going to get tatted anymore. So my whole left side is, is going to be full by my lifetime. Um, but then also, I'm an open book. If you ever want to talk or chit chat, you can always reach out to me. Uh, Bishop knows all my information um, and just be you. No one's, no one can stop you from being you. Enjoy yourself, love yourself and give yourself some grace sometime. Life's hard and just remember to uh, trust in God and, and trust in yourself. I can't hear you. 
There we go. I appreciate that. <laughs> you got me now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you, girl. Um, continue to do great things. You are definitely, again, like you're a friend, but I'm, you're also like I'm a fan. So um, definitely rooting for you down here. Hopefully one day um, my, little, my little shorty is playing ball enough to where we get that scholarship offer from uh, from Adi Gildan at, you know what I'm saying, such and such university where she's been a head coach for nine <laughs> Well, she's been a head coach for nine years, a couple national championships. You know what I'm saying? That's what be. That's what I my dream for you is. Uh, um, also, down in Eugene, we play Oregon in Oregon State. We play Oregon first, I want to say, on November 12th, and then Oregon State two days later or a day later or something like that. All right, we'll be at both. Like we'll be at both games. Don't even trip. We got you. Okay. Love you. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you all for tuning in, man. You could have been anywhere in the world. We decided to listen to the stream. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, that's Audi. I am your play funny host of the most your country cousin, Sir Winning. Have a good rest of your night. Peace.